What's up guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to talk about what are the best drills to use when you're practicing. Racing is obviously not like most sports. Other sports have drills that you can do when you're practicing so that you can become better at that sport. Racing is just not one of those sports. There's not many drills that you can do at the racetrack to become a better driver. Most drivers just do laps around the racetrack. Sometimes they invite a friend and they do a little battling back and forth and practice racing, but there's not much that you can do that'll help you practice techniques that will teach you to become a better driver. That is until today. I have five drills that you can use at the racetrack that will make you a better driver. So with that being said, let's get started with the video. Before we get into the drills, I wanna start off by saying that you need to set goals when you go to the racetrack. There's no point in practicing if you're not setting goals. If you have no measurable way of knowing that you've gotten better today, there's no real way to know that you did anything productive. So go to the track and set a goal to accomplish a certain thing, whether it's braking, accelerating, getting smoother with your hands, set a goal and try and accomplish it. Even to this day, I set goals when I go to practice for races. I'll set a goal that I wanna learn the gear ratio or I wanna learn the tire pressure or turns four and five are really messing me up. So my goal today is to get these corners down or understand the tire pressure. But I set goals so I know that I've accomplished something that day. This isn't something that's gonna wildly improve your technique overnight. It's just something that helps paint a clear picture in your head so that you can be focused on what you need to be at the racetrack. So the first drill you can do is drive one-handed. Now this is something that my RPG teammates taught me about and they learned it from Ben Cooper, who's a three-time world champion. But basically, drive around the racetrack one-handed. First of all, this drill helps you a lot just with conditioning. It's super difficult to drive one-handed. I'm sure a lot of you guys don't realize how much your arms just keep you in the seat when you're driving. So driving one-handed is gonna be some really good conditioning to become a stronger driver. It definitely works out your forearms, your shoulders, and especially your abs. It's something that you can do at the beginning of the day just to get your blood flowing and to get your muscles ready to go for a whole day. Not only does this make you just a stronger driver, it makes you a much smoother driver. To be fast driving one-handed, you have to be smooth. It's really uncomfortable to drive one-handed when you're really jerky on the steering wheel because it just makes it difficult to drive. So by driving one-handed, you'll become a much smoother driver just because you're gonna get stronger and you're gonna know what it takes to turn the steering wheel with the least amount of input. I talked about it in a previous video, but it also helps teach pushing with your outside hand. When you go through a corner when your hand's on the outside, you realize how much smoother it is when you push rather than when you pull. So this drill is just about getting stronger with your hands, teaching you how to be smoother with the steering wheel and how to push on the steering wheel instead of pulling on it. I'd suggest you go out and do five laps left-handed and five laps right-handed. It's a very difficult thing to do for the whole day, so probably just do a few sessions like this, but it'll definitely make you a better driver. So the second drill that I suggest doing is long endurance sessions. Again, this helps with conditioning because you'll become a much stronger driver and help work out those muscles that you only use when you're driving. So do a 20 to 30 lap session, and if your track's super long, maybe cut that down by five or 10 laps. But go longer than you would at any final. You don't wanna condition just for the amount of laps you run in the final, because that's when you get tired. You wanna condition for more than you would at a regular race. That's why I suggest doing 20 or 30 laps, because that's normally longer than most finals. But what I really want you to focus on is trying to push the go-kart every single lap and be consistent every single lap. What happens to most drivers is when they get to the lead, they panic and start to tighten up and don't know how to lead. They start making mistakes and slowing down. This is something that I do to this day. And so this drill of just driving alone helps you get more comfortable leading the pack. When you get out to the front, you wanna be able to break at your latest breaking point alone. You don't want to have that reference in front of you. You want to be able to do fast laps every single lap alone. You also want to be consistent. The best way to be consistent is just to drive and do laps over and over and over again. If you practice it, you'll do it in the race. So practice doing laps over and over and over again so that you can do these laps during the race. What I like to imagine when I get out to the lead of a lot of these bigger races is just me doing those long practice sessions. I try and tune out what all the drivers are doing behind me and just focus on what I do in those practice sessions. Just hit your marks and get in a rhythm so that you can keep doing it over and over and over again and you can stretch your lead. If you can get good at practicing long endurance sessions and long sessions where you're just consistent and still fast every single lap, 
you're definitely going to be a threat at the end of the race when you're leading. You're going to get to the lead and be able to pull that lead and nobody's going to be able to stop you. So this is definitely something that I suggest doing. Go out and do 20 to 30 lap sessions and just put those laps in over and over and over again. Get stronger and get more consistent. The third drill that I like to do is a braking drill. Now when you're at the track practicing, you're not trying to go the fastest every single session. It's not that important to be that fast on a practice day because you're there to learn. Like I said, you're there to set goals, so it's not that important to be the fastest. So this braking drill, you're not gonna be that fast doing it. What I want you to do is go into every corner and brake as late as you possibly can. Now you're gonna blow past the apex over and over and over again, but what you're gonna do is get more comfortable on the brakes. There's that feeling that everybody gets when they know they've gone too deep on the brake pedal. And that's that sketchy back end sliding and dancing around and you just kind of lose control of the go-kart and blow past the apex. If you can get more comfortable in that area and understand what it takes to slow the go-kart down to make the apex, you're going to be more dangerous when you have to make that last lap, you know, late lunge into the corner to get the pass done for the win. Get comfortable on the brakes. Get comfortable with the back end dancing. Know that if you go into the corner super deep and the back end goes to step out on you, you can control it. I've fallen victim to this where I go into the corner super late to pass somebody and then I just blow past the apex. If you can get more comfortable on the brakes, you're gonna be much better at slowing the go-kart down and understanding that just because the back end's starting to come free, you're not gonna lose this corner and you're gonna make that apex. So go into every corner and just kind of blow the corner. You know, go in super deep, break five, 10 feet later than you normally do, and just try your best to get the go-kart to stop. The back end's gonna dance, you're gonna miss a lot of the corners, you're gonna be really slow as well, but remember, you're there to learn, you're not there to go purple. This is also gonna teach you where the threshold is on the brake pedal. There's a small line between locking up the brakes and hitting the brakes super efficiently. If you can get on the brakes super late and understand that little bit of travel in the brake pedal between locking up and a super heavy hit, you're definitely gonna become a much more efficient breaker going into the corner. You're gonna be able to slow the go-kart down a few feet before everybody else, and that's gonna make a big difference. Racing is measured in tenths of seconds. So if you can get the go-kart slowed down just that little bit before everybody else, because you know the difference between locking up and a heavy hit on the brake pedal, you're gonna be a much faster driver. So like I said, go into the corner late and just get comfortable on the brake pedal. Learn your limits, learn what you can do on the brake pedal, and you'll definitely become a more consistent driver on the brakes. So now that the braking's covered, let's talk about throttle points and a drill that you can do to become better at applying the throttle. So one thing that many drivers fall victim to is applying the gas too early. Most drivers will apply it before the apex and not apply it when the cart is pointed in the direction that they want to go. You might think you're hitting the throttle late, but I guarantee you if you watch a video of a faster driver going through the corner, they're rolling way more speed into the corner and getting on the gas much later than you. A drill you can do to get better in this area is to go into the corner normally and then just get off the brakes and off the throttle until you pass the apex. Just go into the corner and let the go-kart roll. Make the corner and then as you get off of the corner, apply the gas. Get used to waiting to hit the throttle. Not only is this going to allow you to understand how much speed you can roll through the center of the corner, it's going to allow you to be a much more adaptive driver. Because the track is always changing, you want to be able to be comfortable letting the go-kart roll longer than normal before you apply the throttle. We've all heard the saying that slow is fast and sometimes not getting on the throttle is faster than getting on the throttle. So go into the corner normally and then just get off the brakes in the throttle and then roll past the apex and get on the gas after the corner. Again, this is the drill that's not gonna be good for the lap time, but you're gonna understand how it is getting on the throttle late and rolling a lot of speed through the center of the corner. And finally, another drill that you can do is try setup changes throughout the day and understand what each change does. Go to the racetrack with the goal of understanding a few setup changes throughout the day. I like to keep these very simple because I want people to understand the main setup changes that people make to a go-kart, like caster, camber, torsion bars, rear axle stiffness, and then moving the front and rear hubs in and out. You don't have to have super complicated changes or pile on changes one after another. But what you should do is go out and do 10 laps with the go-kart standard. Then turn around, come in, change one thing to the go-kart, and then go back out again. If you can't feel the change, come back in, set it back to standard, do 10 laps, come back in again, change it, and go again. Do this over and over again until you can understand what that change did to the go-kart. Another thing that I really like to do is go out with the pressure set normally and then come in and immediately drop it three or four pounds and then go out again. 
This is going to help you understand what it's like driving on low tire pressure and make you a much better driver in those early laps. It's a setup change, so it kind of falls in this category, but it's definitely something that you need to understand what the go-kart does when you're on low tire pressure. So go out on the racetrack, do a couple laps, come back in and make a change. Understand what these changes do to the go-kart. Keep it simple. You don't have to change your seat position or change the toe of the go-kart. Just do simple changes that'll help give you a better understanding of the go-kart. That's it for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if there's any drills that you guys do at the racetrack to become a better driver. Also, let me know any other things that you guys wanna learn in the comments below. I also wanna thank you guys a lot for supporting my TikTok. I posted a video and I got like 20,000 views on it. So thank you guys so much for that and following my TikTok. So if you wanna follow me on there, make sure to check it out. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram and on my Facebook. That's where you get any updates on my racing career. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a lot knowing that you guys are here and supporting my channel. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you at the next one.